Uh, I've been at the uh, London Public Library now for um, about two and a half months. So I'm very new not only to the system, but also to London itself. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about public libraries and uh, reducing inequalities, um, London Public Library specifically, but uh, all public libraries uh, across Canada. Uh, I'm going to start by telling you why I've chosen public libraries as my career and why they're my life. Um, libraries do wonderful thing by leveraging the collective wealth of its community, and we provide access to a collection of tools that few could afford it on their own. Now, you might say that most public services do the same thing, uh, but I think what libraries does is special and unique in that we are uh, <coughs> the only organization in town that does such a thing um, in terms of uh, collections and so on and so forth. Uh, we're open to everyone and adaptable to the needs of the community, and I think we've uh, proven that over the past uh, century. Uh, we are an unbiased and trusted provider of information and a protector of intellectual freedom, which is becoming more and more important as time moves on. And as such, I believe that we are a pillar of a democratic society. And with all due respect to anybody that gets public funding and all the wonderful work that they do, I do believe that libraries are the ultimate public good. Next slide, please. And uh, you may know this quote by Mark Twain, which is actually not the actual quote, just in case you're wondering. Um, he went to England, uh, he was sick, people thought he was dead, and he wrote to a, a newspaper man, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. Uh, the same thing can be said for libraries. They, they, they had us dead in the water 20 years ago, and here we are. Uh, that is a picture of the fantastic Calgary Public Library in downtown Calgary. I don't know if anybody's been in it and anybody's seen it. It is just wonderful from the outside. It's also just as beautiful from the inside. Next. Just to show, uh, share some stats with you, uh, these are from the Ontario uh, government. The uh, libraries feed into these statistics. You can go and search for them on the web. Um, there are 335,000 items borrowed from public libraries in Ontario every day. Uh, there are 485,000 patron engagements a day, 200,000 in-person in visits, almost 14,000 program attendees a day. Next, please. Um, in terms of technology, we still have people using our, our workstations, 36,000 workstations a day, 72,000 wireless connections a day. I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. Um, we have 307,000 <coughs> website visits a day and 137,000 visits to our social media sites every single day. Uh, this was uh, from a report. I'm going to actually look up here because I can't read that. Um, uh, from the economic impact report we did in 2015. Now, lots of public libraries have, uh, have done this report. And uh, the total impact is a combination of three things. The first are direct tangible benefits. And I'm going to go to my notes on this uh, because it's, sorry, hold on. One more. Here we go. Uh, direct tangible benefits, uh, market cost for replacement. So things like collections, use programs, reference and databases, services, and et cetera. If the library did not provide them and they weren't provided by the community, this is much it would cost the community to provide those services. Uh, indirect tangible benefits are those that, um, um, <coughs> that added benefit, as it were, like for example, wages paid and spent back into the community. And then there's direct expenses, uh, expenses or, <clears throat> such as operations, capital improvement, employment, and so on. So altogether, the total economic impact of the library to London is $102 million. Next slide, please. So that equates to um, the value to the community. For every dollar invested, London has received $6.68 in value. And the return on investment to the city of London and its citizens is 452%. This, according to the uh, report, which I said, uh, I may have mentioned, I'm not sure, is uh, available on our website. Um, okay, my first quote, I have two, this is the first, um, and this uh, speaks directly to reducing inequalities. There is not such a cradle of democracy upon the earth as the free public library, this republic of letters where, the, where neither rank, office, nor wealth receives the slightest consideration. Uh, that was said by Andrew Carnegie, uh, the builder of over 2,500 public libraries, uh, predominantly in North America. So how do we reduce inequalities? Next, please. Well, we can start with free Wi-Fi. And it's not like Tim Hortons or Starbucks where you have to sign up, give them your email address and everything else. You just sign in, you use it, no catches, nothing. Try to find that anywhere else, I don't think you can. Next, uh, materials. This is still the core service that libraries provide. Uh, we try to meet the present and future literacy, learning, informational, cultural, leisure, and recreational needs of the community through our collections. Um, this is still the best tool we provide for reducing barriers and providing opportunities. Next, please. Uh, fine free. 
uh, collections, uh, the investment that we make in collections, we still need to protect that. You, you give us money, we need to protect that asset. But, um, and so it's like fees for lost materials and, and people like, you know, oh, I lost my book, my dog ate it, whatever the case may be. We actually still ex expect uh, payment for that. But fines themselves for late, bringing books back late, we found it just not, it, it's, it's pretty, creating more of a barrier than it is anything else. It's not working. Uh, the punitive measures are, have, haven't worked for a long, long time. We have thousands of people that um, owe money that aren't using the library, and it makes no sense. So many libraries are going fine free. Uh, you can see the map up here, and it, boy, that looks terrible. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, created by the Urban Libraries Council. It's an American um, organization. And as, as you can see, it maps all of the libraries that have gone at least partially fine free in London Public Library is there and highlighted in yellow. I'm sorry if you can't see that very well. Um, going fine free for children, which we did in 2017, is a natural starting point for going fine free. Uh, but extending that to adults becomes a little bit more difficult because we, we, we get a lot of revenue from that. So we just uh, are working to try to replace that uh, revenue. Chicago Public Library recently went fine free, but that was because the city council uh, supported that, that action and, and I'm assuming give them money for that. Uh, we are going to be discussing that at London Public Library over the next year or so to see if we can find the money for that, but um, you know, that can't make any promises. Okay, um, next please. We do have fine free educator cards, and uh, this is uh, for, for obviously for educators, for teachers, and. Uh, they provide an in-class rotating collection for students to both foster a love, I'm, this is right off our website by the way, uh, foster a love of reading and offer supplemental curriculum support. And we allow them, <coughs> excuse me, to borrow up to six, 60 children's and teens materials for six weeks and place up to 60 halts. Next please. We have a plethora of um, electronic materials, uh, some of you may have used them. Uh, we continue to add to that uh, collection um, and I'm just gonna go through some of this stuff here. Nope. Um, obviously, EPUBs and eAudio. Uh, we have uh, magazines. We have uh, London, we have newspapers. London Free Press. You could read every morning um, just by going to Press Reader. Mango. You can learn a language. New York Times. Canopy and Hoopler. You can watch a movie online. Uh, Ancestry.com. Genealogy study. And then Lynda.com has as um, uh, visual uh, videos, uh, giving instruction, and everything from Office 365 to the most obscure. CGI software you can find. Next, please. But there is an issue um, that we have. Um, publishers have inordinate power over their co uh, content, and they're not really kind to libraries in terms of circulating that material. So we're, we're in a bit of a battle with them right now, and um, we're, we're going to the federal government looking for support for that. Just something to keep in mind as we go forward. If we might be looking for advocacy in that area, you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, uh, I think uh, Sarah mentioned the labs upstairs. Uh, uh, this is something for everyone up there. Kids, teens, small business, entrepreneurs, et cetera. We have sewing machines. I, not real technology, but it's, it's kind of cool to see them and then people do use them. Uh, 3D printing, uh, media lab with green screen and lighting equipment. We have a studio uh, with soundproof for audio recording. That's our, very much our most popular thing. It's always booked. Uh, we have a memory lab where you can convert your old VHS into digital. We have a creative la creativity lab with high-end Macs and PCs with Adobe Creative Cloud software. Uh, and we have regular programs and training sessions in the labs. Uh, one, of our, uh, one of the things we're most proud of is our newcomer. Um, we have two settlement offices at our Beacock and Jolna branches. And um, we have workers that speak a ver variety of languages. And it's designed to help newcomers and <laughs> find information and assistance to, to, to welcome them to London and, and get the services that they need. Uh, along those lines, uh, next please, uh, we had a citizenship, a citizenship ceremony in this building, in this room, right on this stage, uh, on October 10th. And the wonderful thing about it, there were about over 100 uh, a new citizen. Every one of them was under the age of 18. It was uh, quite a raucous affair. <laughs> And I got my citizenship about six months ago. I did not have a Mountie. <laughs> um, sorry, next slide. Um, Isaac Asimov, um, uh, if you go to the, the, the internet, you can do a search on libraries and quotes and you can find thousands of them. Um, but one of my favorites is from Isaac Asimov. Um, 
and I'll just read it, my real education, the superstructure, the details, true architecture I got out of the public library. For an impoverished child whose family could not afford to buy books, the library was the open door to wonder and achievement, and I can never be sufficiently grateful that I had the wit to charge through that door and make the most of it. And um, that always gets me that quote, I love it. And um, it must be stated that even if it's not implicitly stated in our mission statement, uh, social equality drives every program we present, every book we buy, and every community space that we offer. And just one more. And uh, one of the questions I had was, how can I help the library? Well, if you're in here and you don't have a library card, shame on you. <laughs> But please uh, get a library card and we'll still welcome you and explore what we have to offer. If you do have a library card or if you're just impressed by what I talked about tonight, uh, tell a friend. I, I realize I've been moving the microphone around like this and I'm sorry, but I move my hands a lot. Um, um, if you are representing an organization and feel that there's some synergy between the two of us, please approach us and, and talk to us about a partnership. We have hundreds. Um, advocate for us at the municipal level, at the uh, provincial level, and at the federal level. And um, if you have the, the means and the wherewithal, we, we will be happy to take donations. We usually put them towards uh, construction programs and, and other, other valuable, um, um, <coughs> valuable things that we do on a regular basis. And uh, I got in at 11.40, no, 11.38.